When I first joined the Wildlife Rescue, I realized that we were on the brink of something big. Our animal hospital was overflowing. And so was our bank account. We knew it was time for change. If we wanted to continue to save all the injured wildlife in the city, we'd have to grow. Over the next four years, we looked at things like expanding our building, renting trailers, getting corporate partners. Yet, every time we got close to making a commitment to change, we'd find an excuse to back out. We even developed a big campaign to build a new animal hospital, got an architect and everything. Then, at our AGM, our own people voted the whole idea down. That's when I realized that we didn't know how to change. I didn't know how to help us change. But I wasn't going to admit that to myself or my board. Rather than look for new ideas outside our organization, I just got frustrated and I quit. We all have important problems we want to solve in the world today, from big global issues like racism and climate change to individual challenges like addiction and personal debt. Yet, our efforts to create real change fail 70% of the time. Why? Some problems are just too complex for us to solve on our own. We are limited by our own set of knowledge and experience. If we can't find a better way to tackle today's tough issues, we're in big trouble. But there is an alternative. Imagine what it would be like to be able to create truly innovative solutions to our biggest problems. Think about what we could do with that kind of power. Cure disease, save species, end poverty, and find peace. What's stopping us? Fear, uncertainty, it just feels way too hard to go out and find new ideas. It's easier to stick to the way we've always done it, even though we know it doesn't work. It drives me up the wall, which is why I've spent the last decade trying to figure out how to make change easier through my work as a story coach and strategist. And here's what I've learned. We already have the ability to solve our toughest problems. It's just been hidden until now. So what is this magical superpower? Something called narrative intelligence. Our natural ability to learn and solve problems with stories. We use our narrative intelligence every second of every day to make decisions and control behavior. Here's how it works. Our brains get bombarded with random bits of information all the time. To make sense of what's going on, we organize it all into the pattern of a story with a problem, quest for answers, and a solution. You can see this pattern in fiction like Harry Potter, where the hero has to stop a dark lord from destroying the world or in your friend's story about how they had to fix an evil, leaky toilet. So every story is really just a packet of information, like data, about how someone solved a problem. We keep everything we know about the world in these little story packets in our own personal story database. That means that stories are the source of all of our knowledge, creativity, and innovation. Every time we have to solve a problem, our narrative intelligence searches our stories to figure out what to do. And that's all intelligence is, really, an ability to analyze patterns to learn and solve problems in a specific area, like math, language, or even sports. In this case, we're analyzing patterns in stories, which is why we call this superpower narrative intelligence. For example, 
On my first camping trip in BC, I had to start a fire in the rain. <laughs> Big surprise. So my narrative intelligence searched my story database to find out how to do that. Except, it didn't find anything because I'd never done it before. Stumped, it set off a bit of an alert, shouting, new problem, and sent me on a quest to find new stories that might have an answer. First, I tried to Google how to start a fire in the rain on my phone, except it died because it was too wet. <laughs> So cold and frustrated, I shouted out to my friends to see if they knew. And that's when one remembered seeing someone set cheese puffs on fire in high school. <laughs> Aha! I had cheese puffs in my pack. Once I'd found this good idea by searching my friend's story database, my narrative intelligence took it and turned it into a virtual story or a, you know, a future movie in my head so I could play it out to see how it might work. Seemed like a good idea, so I went for it. And poof, my fire started. My narrative intelligence then filed the whole experience away as a new story in my story database for future reference. Most of the time, this whole process occurs subconsciously. But, what would happen if we could use our narrative intelligence deliberately to make change? We'd be able to escape the limits of our own stories and access the biggest data set in the world. The stories of almost 8 billion other people across the globe to find new ideas to help us solve our problems. Well, how would that work? Here's another example. Most college instructors are experts in their fields, but never had the chance to study how to be great teachers. To fix this problem, one college hired me to create an instructor training program. Since I'd studied adult education, I could have just built the whole thing on my own. Except, that didn't work so well for me back at the wildlife rescue. Instead, I decided to tap into the story databases of 400 of their top instructors, figuring that they'd know way more about what works at their college than I would. We spent two whole days together in a kind of story summit where they shared thousands of stories about excellent teaching experiences. Then we analyzed those stories looking for patterns. That gave us great new ideas about how to develop the program using things like mentoring and peer review, stuff I never would have thought of on my own. The program was such a hit with faculty that it's still running today. And that's the power of narrative intelligence. It helps us use stories to both learn from the past and design the future. You might be thinking, this all sounds way too weird and complicated for the kinds of problems I'm dealing with. And I get it. Trying something new can be scary. That's also the beauty of narrative intelligence. It isn't new. It's something we use subconsciously all the time. So how can you try it out? Think about something you want to change. Then go and ask three people outside your regular circle to tell you a story about how they did something similar. It could be about something as simple as renovating a kitchen, or as complex as changing government policy. As you listen to their stories, see if you can find any patterns and use those to come up with new ideas. Maybe they all shopped at the same kitchen store or worked with the same government lobbyist. Or next time you have a big new idea that you're not sure will work, like creating a theme park with killer dinosaurs, or starting a business that catches ghosts. Try turning it into a movie in your mind. That way, you can test it out risk-free to see how it might work. You can even bring it to life using something like a storyboard or a flowchart to get feedback from others. We are at a tipping point in the world. Our families, communities, economy, and environment are on the brink of collapse. Why? 
because we're all stuck in our own stories, limited by our own tiny set of experience and expertise. And no matter how good our individual stories are, they're just not enough on their own to solve the kinds of complex problems we face today. If we can't find a better way to make change, we're doomed. Narrative intelligence gives us the power to create the future we want, the opportunity to tap into the unbelievably rich stories of almost 8 billion people across the globe, to find new ideas to get us out of today's mess and discover the path to a better tomorrow. We are at a tipping point. The world needs you, me, all of us to be better change makers. It's time for us to put our narrative superpowers to work to solve our toughest problems for good. Thank you.